Now a question. What have Herbert Hoover, Art Linkletter, Jack London, and Richard Nixon all had in common? Well, they've all been members of the exclusive all-male Bohemian Club in California, where every year at this time, the elite from around the country get together for two and a half weeks of uh, fun and games. Steve Shepard has this special assignment report. More than 2,000 members of San Francisco's exclusive and all-male Bohemian Club have once again descended on Northern California. These men will spend most of the month of July encamped on some 2,700 acres of pristine and privately owned redwood forest. Forest very much like this. The place is called Bohemian Grove, and it's located just 80 miles north of San Francisco. The Grove is the Bohemian Club's summer retreat, and its facilities are hidden beneath lush forest canopy extending south from the banks of Sonoma County's Russian River. For more than a century, the camp has been a place where club members and guests from all across America gather to relax. The retreat is divided into dozens of small camps, the most prominent of which is called Mandalay. Among its members are businessmen like Leonard Firestone and Edgar Kaiser, and political figures like Gerald Ford, Henry Kissinger, William French Smith, and George Shultz. President Reagan, Vice President Bush, and Defense Secretary Weinberger are members of other camps. Richard Nixon is a Bohemian, and so are high-ranking executives of such companies as Eastern Airlines, Standard Oil of Indiana, and Bank of America. For the most part, the men of Bohemian Grove are over 50, highly successful, and, according to many employees, politically conservative. Well, each year, uh, many of them seem to have a stunt, uh, or try to come up with a stunt. Last year, 1980, uh, the popular button was uh, Free the Fortune 500. Membership in the Grove is by invitation only and is determined by such factors as social standing, occupation, and personal connections. Privacy is one of the Grove's most cherished virtues. Members may not photograph, record, speak, or write about activities at the retreat. While many public officials are Grove members, the press is a distinctly unwelcome guest. We're from ABC News. Well, get back there. Get back there. Can we talk to somebody in there? Get back there. Anyone willing to navigate a boat up the Russian River can get a glimpse of the northern edge of the compound, but that's about all. Still, there are outsiders who have researched the Grove. Sociology professor William Dumhoff found out enough to write a book on the place. Well, I think it's a playground for the powerful. It's a place where uh, wealthy men from all of the United States gather for two weeks to uh, relive summer camp with this ceremony called the Cremation of Care that uh, begins the, uh, the uh, two-week encampment where the body of dull care symbolizing woes and concerns is burned on an altar in front of a big owl statue. When that ceremony ends, they all start to cheer and yell and hand each other a beer. And... Other regular activities include the production of two plays, one of which involves major sets, orchestral music, and extravagant costumes. The other play appears to be just a bit on the lighter side, at least judging from these old photos. Members also spend time swimming, hiking, relaxing in the sun, and doing a bit of drinking from the Grove's own privately labeled spirits. Like a boy's camp, the Grove has a symbol, in this case, a somewhat fierce-looking owl. It also has a patron saint, St. John of Napomuk, a legitimate 13th century Bohemian canonized for his sense of honor. What the Grove does not have is any women, not even as employees. Despite its camp-like atmosphere, the Grove does host some serious business. To the degree that there's anything important happens at the Bohemian Grove, it's political. The important speeches that have been made by, at the Bohemian Grove have been made, for instance, and the best example, by Richard Nixon. Eisenhower gave a speech there. It was the first time the uh, West Coast establishment really saw him close up. Discussions at the Grove in the 1930s helped lead to the development of nuclear power and the atomic bomb. It was at the Grove in 1967 that Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan hashed out differences over their presidential ambitions. Each year, guests like Henry Kissinger or Spignu Brzezinski address members on their areas of expertise. Presidential counselor Edwin Meese will be among this year's speakers. And each year, other guests come to the Grove simply to enjoy themselves. This year, CIA director William Casey is a scheduled guest of John McCone, former CIA director. Baseball commissioner Bowie Kuhn has been invited as a guest of baseball owner Peter O'Malley. Despite the presence of so many notables, the Grove is not without its small headaches. Anti-nuclear demonstrators gathered near the entrance to the retreat this year to wave signs and chant slogans. The Grove is also facing a suit from the state of California because it refuses to hire women. Still, the Bohemian Grove seems in no danger of passing. Herbert Hoover called it the world's greatest men's party. 
And there is a list of powerful people waiting to get in on it. Steve Shepard, ABC News, San Francisco. Straight from the San Francisco airport, I headed to Monte Rio, a city with beautiful redwoods and picturesque coastlines. The perfect getaway for the world's rich and powerful. And in fact, every year, CEOs, media moguls, and high-level politicians flock here to the Bohemian Grove's secluded campout. Less than a half a mile from the, us, there's millionaires, billionaires, the people that control the world, control the central banks, that build nuclear weapons. I mean, this was their summer playground. Dr. Peter Phillips spent three days on the inside. Now on the outside, he argues that the public has a right to know what's going on and is calling for an occupation of the grove. It's, it's speaking to the, the powerful of the world, saying, we want to have a democratic process. We want to have an open, transparent process. And they're making business deals there. They're, they're talking policy. Um, so there's a lot of conversation. A claim which members deny. Their motto here is that weaving spiders come not here, which they claim means there's no business discussions. It's just a vacation for the wealthy men. Author and activist Mark Dice has a rare Grove yearbook issued every decade showing everything from men in drag to high-profile politicians giving speeches. It's a really good way for the ruling class to get an inside perspective uh, from another ruling class member. The book shows George W. Bush and his father giving lakeside talks, along with Presidents Jimmy Carter and Richard Nixon. Others who have attended are David Brooks of the New York Times, along with CEOs from CNN and Fox, Jimmy Buffett, David Rockefeller, and Henry Kissinger. Mark also has an official 2005 membership list of Grove attendees. Your typical warmongers, George Bush Sr., Colin Powell, Richard Pearl, and your, your typical Republican establishment insiders. Hundreds heeded the call to protest. The people in the Grove are about to be conquered. College student Kimberly is outraged by what she sees as the top 1%, excluding the rest from the discussion. It shows that we are really disenfranchised, that our voice is a little muted. Um, money is speech, you know, so if you don't have money, you don't really have a voice. Activist Felipe Messina worries about dangerous policies that are drafted from within the Redwoods. The nuclear uh, program was discussed here and then developed later, the fact that Reagan was here uh, in 80, and then afterwards um, we had the Reagan revolution. We know what you're doing. We know what goes on in here. An event with so little transparency has bred theories, some of them pretty wild, about what goes on on the inside, especially at the cremation of care ritual, where Grove members burn a coffin effigy to a 40-foot owl. <laughs> to counteract the cremation ceremony, the protesters held a creation of care festival. The creation of care, of course, is opposite of cremation of care. Peace and justice activist Cindy Sheehan speculates on the lack of media coverage. Because they're part of it. You know, they're, they're the propaganda arm for the 1%. The corporate media is the 1%. I mean, if you look at it that way, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, Fox, they are the corporate 1%. They're not going to do negative stories about themselves, about capitalism, about global empire and war. How can someone own a 2,000-year-old redwood grove? Well, that's the question that the occupiers are asking about the Bohemian Grove, which they say belongs to everyone and not just the 1%. What's going on up there? At the gates of the Bohemian Grove, a line of riot police made sure that everyone didn't gain access to the lair of the 1%. Abby Martin, RT, Monterio, California. So, Abby mentioned a few people in attendance at Bohemian Grove. Here's actually a direct quote from former President Richard Nixon. He said in his memoirs, If I were to choose the speech that gave me the most pleasure and satisfaction in my political career, it would have been my lakeside speech at the Bohemian Grove in July 1967. Because this speech traditionally was off the record, it received no publicity at the time. But in many ways, in important ways, it marked the first milestone on my presidency. And, you know, sentiments like this make people wonder how many other milestones have been marked at the Grove and why, after so long, so little has been leaked about what goes on. Joining me now to talk more about this is RT correspondent Abby Martin. And, Abby, I know uh, you spent most of this weekend in Monterio, right outside the gates of the Grove. Uh, what was it like? Uh, it was interesting, Christine. Definitely different than previous years. Uh, as you said, 
you know, there was definitely um, a lot of secrecy going on, so we couldn't really get inside, but we did see a lot of people outside. There was a Creation of Care Festival. It was the first time that the Occupy movement had really come into full force and, and you know, is calling out the power structures pretty much all over the world. First, we had the Bilderberg Group where the Occupy movement kind of merged with those protesters, and now we see them here uh, protesting the Bohemian Grove and its secrecy. You, you talked, Abby, in your piece about, uh, you know, uh, people wonder why the Redwoods are only for the 1%. But, uh, you know, let's break this down, this down. I mean, this is private property. The owner has the right to do what he wants, invite who he wants to his property. Um, talk about why some of these critics and, and protesters uh, are most angry about what goes on inside. That's a good point, Christine. Um, I think people are upset. Yes, it is private property, and he does have a right to invite whoever he wants. But when we know for sure that certain policies have come out of the grove, uh, we know that Nixon and Reagan sat under a tree, and Reagan agreed um, to have Nixon wait to run. Uh, we know that the Manhattan Project was originated in the Grove. And those are just what we know. Um, you know, when you have 2,000 of the world's top echelon of media moguls, CEOs, and high-profile politicians getting together, of course, business deals are going to be made, politics are going to be discussed, and who else, who else knows uh, what is really going on there. So I think people are just really outraged about it's just another closed door meeting that the public has no say at all in what goes on or, or no say in any really discussions that happen there. Yeah, and uh, Abby, as you know, I was there last year, and there are some really interesting stories. The one you mentioned, uh, how, how Nixon and Reagan spoke, and, and Reagan agreed to, to hold off on running for president. Um, it, it is, you know, certain policy decisions that do come out that affect a lot of people. Uh, you touched a little bit upon this, but, but go into a little detail. I mean, things are different this year than when I was there last year. Uh, because two months after last year's Bohemian Grove took place, the Occupy Wall Street movement began. I guess talk a little bit about the role this has played, you know, the 1% versus the 99% and how that's playing outside the walls of the Grove. Sure. I think people, you know, they're recognizing that this is the 1% of people in the world. We have millionaires, billionaires. I mean, you cannot... Uh, you have to be pretty uh, pretty rich to get in there. Um, there are 128 camps with 20 to 50 people in these camps. Um, each one has a full barn. Um, you know, very rich, wealthy elite going in there from all echelons of society. And and what really happened this year was the first time that the Occupy movement recognized, hey, the Bohemian Grove is really something that we should be calling out and occupying. So they made an event, Occupy Bohemian Grove just as they have before, just dovetailing off this whole movement of the 99% versus the 1%. Um, and they had an event in the Monte Rio Amphitheater, which is about a mile outside the gates of the Grove. And all day they had uh, speakers, um, bands. Uh, they had a woman from the Mothers of Fukushima that was there just because she knew that, you know, the nuclear program was basically started here uh, decades ago. So she was calling out uh, nuclear the radiation the radiation and everything that's happening in Fukushima and just kind of tying it back to the policies that were originated in these redwoods, Christine. Um, and a lot of the occupiers were just saying, we want a voice. We want to be heard just because we don't have money doesn't mean that we should not have a say in the democratic process that the society uh, should be built on. And that was built on. Um, and then you had a big march from everyone that was there, this creation of care festival, which was which, of course, was to counteract the cremation of care ritual that, that these people do in the Bohemian, um, which is very interesting. It, it's 50 people in monk robes walking around um, and they cremate a coffin effigy to a giant 40-foot owl named Moloch. Um, so these people were having their, their own, you know, creators to say, we, we want to to care. We don't want to burn our way and pretend like nothing's happening, you know, when there's so much starvation and war and all these these things that are happening pretty much at the hands of what they say are the people who are inside the grove kind of celebrating their own power. So we saw March to the gates of the grove where, of course, they were met with uh, riot police and, and a pretty tense standoff there. There was one arrest of a 75-year-old man um, who crossed the police line. So you talk about all these protesters who have come uh, sort of as part of the Occupy movement, which is new this year. What about inside, you know, on the other side of those walls, Abby? I mean, is there any evidence that those who attend this, you know, retreat have changed their tune or at least are a little more sympathetic to the 99% cause? 
I don't, I don't know, Christina, you know, I haven't talked to anyone except, of course, Peter Phillips, uh, the professor and former director of Project Censored, who did attend three days, did his did, did, did dissertation on the Grove, where he, uh, he did see business deals being made firsthand. He did see a lot of business discussion and policy discussion. But, of course, after he did that, they did close it off to, uh, to journalists and, and everyone who is invited, who is a media mogul, like you said in your intros, kind of sworn to secrecy um, about what happens there. But, you know, as far as them changing their tune, I think it's just that power structure that we're, that people are battling in the world right now, which is that whole 99% .99 versus 1%. Yeah, I remember. Their voices heard. Uh, I remember, um, Abby, when I was outside, uh, standing outside the gates, a lot of the people sort of driving in on their cars, uh, their very nice cars, I should mention, uh, sort of waving at the protesters and kind of thinking it was a, a little <laughs> circus. Uh, let me ask you real quick, in terms of people who have attended, uh, I know you mentioned a few. We found this audio recording of President Nixon. I wanted to play it really quick and then we can talk about it. Yeah, well, he and Grover that I attend on time to time, the Easterners and the others that come there. But it is the most thing that you will ever can ever imagine in San Francisco crowd because it, it's just terrible. I mean, I have a lot of shaky hands with anybody in San Francisco. So the president there uh, referring to these rumors of homosexual acts, of grown men running around naked. I mean, is this something that people still talk about that happens today? Well, absolutely. I mean, of course, uh, there there are many rumors, but an event with so little coverage, Christine, of course, a lot of uh, wild speculation is going to come out of it. But there has been confirmed that, you know, there is a gay camp there uh, on their bar camps. And with so many bizarre things uh, coming out that we do know about, I mean, we saw Mark Dice, who is an author who had a, a rare and now a uh, yearbook that's released every decade from the Grove. And there were uh, many photos of men in drag. I mean, it's basically a big celebration of themselves and since it was only a men club um they do have multiple members forming uh plays and whatnot but there have been reports um during the 70s and 80s primarily of of homosexual activity um but you know a lot of speculation uh really but that is an interesting quote from from yeah. Nixon there especially considering that he said that his uh, best speech had come from the grove yeah, no, interesting stuff. And, and certainly, you know, we should say for so many years, you know, there, there were, uh, you know, there was chatter about Bohemian Grove and it was thought of as a conspiracy theory, uh, even though the mainstream media still doesn't talk about this at all. Um, you know, you're there, Abby. A lot of alternative publications are there. We have the Internet now. So it is becoming more mainstream in terms of people at least acknowledging that it, that it happens, that it exists. Uh, appreciate you weighing in today. RT correspondent Abby Martin. Yep, there it is, right in Monte Rio, California. I bet a lot of you have never heard of the place, but it really is quite interesting. For the next two weeks, much of the world's elite will be flocking to a secretive orgy of power, where they party it up bohemian style, where they give talks, network, discuss policy, and drink heavily. This powerful men's only club has been meeting for the last 133 years. Even the idea for the Manhattan Project, which led to the creation of the atom bomb, came out of the Grove in 1942. Pretty powerful stuff. But who actually attends? The gathering is packed with oil tycoons, politicians, business leaders, and foreign diplomats who all make the pilgrimage to this yearly Redwood campout. Presidents Nixon, Reagan, and George W. Bush all attended the Grove before they graced the Oval Office. Even media bigwigs are a staple, with the likes of the Hearst Dynasty and Walter Cronkite, now replaced with Rupert Murdoch and CEOs from CNN and LA Times. So if the media is there, Americans should know all about what's going on, right? So have you heard of Bohemian Grove? I have not. Not really. No, not at all. I don't have a clue. No. No, I'm afraid I don't. The world's most powerful players uh, get together and discuss policy, party, and also do mock sacrificial rituals together. Oh, no. That's... An, that's basically first news that I heard, I heard about it. They sacrifice a, um, a coffin effigy to a giant 40-foot owl. So it's kind of like a modern-day Stonehenge. I don't think it's cool at all. I don't think it's on, no. If that truly does take place, I think it's great. That's scary. That's really scary. I, I did hear they were talking about like a new world order in like two years, something like that. Maybe that's what they're planning. <laughs> it's also just a new whole order. Nobody can really fight it, and it's completely different than our order. Why do they do that's not supposed to be published? So, no, I think definitely um, the public is supposed to know what's going on there. For sure I should know if 
the media will show it in the TV or newspapers, but unfortunately, no. Well, we can't just leave it at that. Nothing left to do but book a flight to San Francisco for the weekend and find out for myself. Abby Martin, RT, Washington. Well, let's see what's going on right now on this Friday. We have a country weeks away from defaulting on its debt. One of the biggest media giants in the country and world is being investigated by the FBI for journalistic wrongdoing. A former government employee faces sentencing in a case that's helping Obama outdo every previous president for going after whistleblowers. Consumer confidence hit a two-year low because jobs are scarce. That's just one bit of bad economic news. And... What are a group of some of the most powerful men in the country meeting in the forests of California to do secretly? Say, solve these problems? Booze? Hatch policy? Political careers and deals in private? Have sex with the male waitstaff? Well, the latter three are actually what the allegations are that have been made in the past about the goings-on at Bohemian Grove. Uh, stomping around, it's the stomping ground of the Bohemian Club, which critics have called Bilderberg West. Now, the club in this retreat has been around for more than 100 years. It's attracted in the past presidents from Taft and Hoover to Reagan and George Bush, father and son, along with actors, business leaders, and sometimes protesters on the outside, at least. Take a look at these old reports from the 1980s and 90s. The politics of peace and the environment facing down the power elite. The motto of the Bohemian Club is weaving spiders come not here. Every year at this time the elite from around the country get together for two and a half weeks of uh, fun and games. The media aren't allowed in. In fact, the Bohemians have a long history of secrecy. But some people say with this much power and this much money located in one place, there is more to the Bohemian Club than campfires and canoeing. Most of the Bohemians had left earlier knowing there might be some trouble. The stated reasons for the demonstration were the connections of the club's members to nuclear weapons research, the alleged political and business deals made there, and the exclusion of women from membership. Inside the compound, there have been persistent rumors about closet homosexuality. Don Heimforth, a former waiter, says there have always been relationships between club members and employees. And, uh, one black waiter, a uh, gay black waiter, uh, years ago said it's whenever they would come over to the employees' quarters, and he, he made the comment that uh, it was not unlike coming down from the big house uh, to the slaves' quarters for a piece of... Oh, wow. Now, I mentioned those are all from the 80s and 90s, but now this story really doesn't get much play. One big exception is our guest, Alex Jones. He is one of the members of the media who have infiltrated Bohemian Grove himself. In 2000, in fact, he sneaked in and filmed the cremation of care ceremony, as it's called. Take a little look at that. <laughs> All the time in the darkness across the small lake, uh, the men in black were doing something behind the dark curtains hanging from the redwood trees. They're getting rid of their cares. Earlier I spoke with Alex Jones. I asked him why Bohemian Grove doesn't really get any mainstream media attention these days. The CEOs and presidents, vice presidents of the big four networks uh, all attend uh, year after year, and you have former presidents, you have current presidents, you have British royalty uh, that go there. Helmut Schmidt, the uh, previous German chancellor, wrote a book, Men in Power is a Political Retrospective, and uh, in the book he said, look, the Trilateral Commission goes there, the Bilderberg Group goes there, the leaders of the world go there for 15 days, and a lot of decisions uh, get made there, and he admitted that they are establishing a private corporate world government and that one of the most important secret meeting houses is the Bohemian Grove. And Richard Nixon uh, told Harper's Magazine, and uh, after his death, a recording was released of the interview uh, that had not been fully published, where he did say uh, that it is basically uh, a, a gay meeting, uh, that uh, that's the main thread besides politics, is that uh, a lot of the major magnets uh, in, uh, in, in corporations and media, but also uh, government come there and uh, male prostitutes are shipped in uh, to service them.
Alex, are you suggesting that I know a lot of reports say that every Republican president since uh, way back in the day have, have attended? Are you are you uh, asserting that they're they're having gay sex? Well, I know that Vanity Fair has reported on the fact that their reporter got arrested there, and uh, their report talked about the homoerotic uh, uh, trappings. Uh, I know that when I was there, uh, I was uh, being whistled at and uh, followed around like it was a Looney Tunes Pepe Le Pew cartoon, and I was the cat uh, to the point of I had to just hide in the woods until it got dark so I could <laughs> videotape the ritual. What do you mean? Uh, Tell and, us about that. Uh, what happened to you? What did, they, what did they do to you? Who was whistling at you? Uh, you would be walking down the forest paths uh, on the 2,700-acre uh, retreat uh, that's in a gorge, and uh, you would have uh, men start walking up to you and saying, what are you doing? What camp are you part of? You want to come party with us? You know, people whistle at you. And I was even you know, pretty naive then. I mean, I snuck in. Once I got in, I, I tried to stay away from crowds of people, but they were still uh, coming over. And there have been other reporters. Spy magazines reported on it. Uh, as I said, Vanity Fair has talked about the fact. I mean, any reporter that actually gets in there uh, is... Uh, approached and they didn't come over and say hey you know we want to have sex with you right now it was just hey let's have some fun and uh, being whistled at and so that that is a large overtone of it but but my main issue is that the Bohemian Grove actually has released some of their annals now uh, through Berkeley and other universities uh, Sonoma State and they brag that they uh, hatched the Manhattan Project there for the atomic bomb uh, they brag that they got government and industry together for that the Star Wars SDI program uh, in the 80s. Uh, so many big events uh, are uh, decided and uh, so many big deals are made at the Bohemian Grove. And so it is that secret smoky room. But instead of a bunch of guys behind closed doors smoking cigars and making decisions with government officials, uh, it is a 15-day retreat uh, with music, alcohol, plays, uh, ritualistic uh, behavior, uh, and uh, the men then also leave the Grove and go to uh, the nearby uh, t town uh, and uh, visit with uh, female prostitutes that are flown in from all over the world. Uh, so that may be one reason there's such a uh, uh, you know, gay overtone in the whole thing is that it's only men uh, allowed uh, inside the Grove. Uh, now because of the threats of lawsuits and things, some women are allowed in food preparation. To work uh, there, right. In, uh, Right, Alex, let me get in here for a second. Uh, I think that some of the stories, too, said that those uh, instances, I think a prostitute was interviewed, that, this was a while back, saying that that's more of the rarity or the exception. Uh, Herver, Hoover, though, called it the greatest men's party and that it was just a lot of fraternal fun. So, I, and I, Peter Bergen, who you confronted about it, said that everybody was very gentlemanly. So a lot of different reports about what exactly is going on. Your experience certainly is interesting. But as far as concerns over the business and political dealings going on there, because that is one of the bigger concerns, and you mentioned the Manhattan Project, that's one that's been widely cited. Others that I've seen are that Reagan and Nixon kind of had private conversations in which Reagan agreed he wouldn't run for president so that Nixon could. And uh, Nixon said that he gave a speech there that he believes kind of launched his political career. But what about any more recent examples of uh, things that are going on there that concern you as far as the policy or political careers being made behind closed doors and not open to the public? Well, you talked about the fact that the dominant media in the United States, the old line dinosaur media, really doesn't talk about Bohemian Grove very much. Um, there was an exception uh, in 2000, right after uh, I got back uh, 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 from the Grove, uh, the announcement was then made on CNN uh, later that the decision for Dick Cheney to be George W. Bush's running mate was made at Bohemian Grove, and that was that was said on CNN. And when I confronted David Gergen uh, at the uh, RNC uh, convention in 2004 in New York, I was very polite, but I brought up the rituals. And he said, listen, if you were inside the Grove, you weren't supposed to talk about that. And I said, no, I snuck in. At which point, uh, the Karl Rove of five previous administrations uh, blew up uh, at me and got in my face, something David Gergen has never been seen to do uh, in the five administrations that he's worked with in thousands of uh, media interviews. So this is a big deal to them. They wait for decades on a waiting list to get into it. 
and major decisions are being made there outside of the democratic uh, processes. So this is one of the main meeting houses for 15 days. I mean, why would why would how do they get off extremely so world long? powerful people? Why would why would these heavy hitters, the most powerful people in the world, travel and spend weeks together uh, for just a party? It is a partying uh, atmosphere where they try to cement the elite together and uh, basically create a consensus for an agenda and I've had several of the widows of Bohemian Grove members send me their internal annals mm -hmm. uh, that you can actually buy uh, uh, from collectors that are thousands of dollars a piece. I have several of these and in there uh, there is a, a very pro-world government anti-national sovereignty uh, sentiment running through it and so that's why it's important is that so many big decisions are being made and they bring the the media the top hollywood people together the head of banking the uh, academia uh, with government and uh, basically uh, it is a huge networking event where they try to cement this global agenda really quickly though i know one of the things is that reporters have traditionally been kept out but you're saying that now the media has a role there well <laughs> by reporters being kept out, uninvited reporters. Uh, mm -hmm. I am the only reporter to ever get in and get out, and uh, that's because other reporters are greedy. They try to sneak in and uh, hang out and hide in the woods you know, for days. Uh, they try to come up and ask people questions, uh, and then they always get arrested. But are you saying that I people able... that are in the media are there now and are a part of this gathering now? Yes. Yes, just like Bilderberg will have the major editors of uh, several large newspapers and TV networks at their events. The same thing is going on at Bohemian Grove because Bohemian Grove has 1,200 members, uh, more than 1,000 guests that are vetted and then allowed to come in. And so that's why you don't see a lot of reportage on Bohemian Grove uh, in the news uh, is because the... Uh, the media is in on it. The media is there meeting with the power structure. And well, then that would imply that even if the media doesn't report on it right away, they're more privy to some of these private uh, speeches that are going on. So then it would be a little bit more transparent, in theory. But we don't really ever see any examples right. uh, of the uh, ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox people that we know have gone there. I mean, not just the heads of networks, the heads of the conglomerates uh, that go there and our members. Uh, you, you don't really ever see them talking about what goes on at the, quote, lakeside uh, chats uh, where uh, world leaders uh, you know, basically speak to the crowd and try to sell them uh, on their ideas. Sometimes many years later, the Grove, to brag, will choose to release the text of a lakeside chat that happened a decade before just to show how they basically charted much of uh, the world's destiny. That's a good point. Uh well, I, not that I'm saying that it's part of the world's destiny, but a good point that um, you made it earlier. But I wanted to, you compared it to Bilderberg, and that's a comparison that's been made. It's been called Bilderberg West. How do you compare the two? Yes, you could compare it to Bilderberg West, but uh, it's bigger. Bilderberg only has about 125 members, maybe 20, 30 guests. Uh, normally, it's somebody like Bill Clinton, an obscure governor who two years later is president, or Tony Blair, an obscure member of parliament who two years after visiting uh, becomes uh, the prime minister of England. Uh, in 2007, Governor Rick Perry of Texas uh, went, and we said then, look for him to run for president in 2012. Uh, I'm on record in my film, Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, covering that. Uh, and so Bilderberg uh, is, is, is all about business and is just the uh, top of the pyramid meeting to adjust any future plans. Bohemian Grove is a place where they bring the Council on Foreign Relations members, where they bring Trilateral Commission members, where they bring other bankers and CEOs who aren't quite in on the game and say, hey, let's drink, let's party, let's have whatever type of prostitute you want, male, female, we got it. Uh, let's do some fun rituals. Uh, you, know, you know, let's engage in some bizarre Masonic uh, slash Luciferian rituals. Uh, and let's just, you know, party. And uh, then they go out and, and act like conservative men on television. But the truth is, for 15 days a year, they are running around with their hair on fire and their pants down. And uh, again, it's Richard Nixon that said, I mean, if you want me to quote it, he said it's the most goddamn. I mean, is it all right if I quote Richard Nixon? Sure. You can pull it up. Richard Nixon said Bohemian Grove is the most goddamn faggy thing you've ever seen. 
Uh, and again, I don't you know say that in a hateful way. That's what Richard Nixon said about it. But he went. And did so you, when I bring did you up see men running around with their erotic, pants down and their hair on fire? Um, okay. Do you really want to know what I saw? Yes. I saw large posters up with men dressed as women outside of some of the camps with Henry Kissinger bent over simulating sticking his fingers in his rectum. Well, every year there is a meeting of the minds, so to speak, organized for the 100 or so uh, people, very powerful. Now, this is invite only, and the last few meetings have taken place at venues such as the Astor Place Resort in Athens, Greece, the Hotel Dolce in Spain, and the Suvretta House in St. Moritz, Switzerland. Well, this year it's scheduled to take place at the Westfield Marriott Hotel, not too far from here, in Chantilly, Virginia. All right, so here's a look at the hotel from the outside, and that's all most people will see during this conference, set to take place May 31st to June 3rd, as the hotel is totally booked and will be on lockdown. We were curious, though, about what this hotel is all about. Take a look at this. Here's the website to the Marriott where the conference is being held. It brags that it captures the elegance of Northern Virginia's colonial estates in a resort-like setting. And that's not all. This Chantilly, Virginia hotel offers a 24-hour fitness center, an indoor and outdoor pool. Plus, those who stay have access to the signature Westfield Fred Couples Golf Club, where no doubt some important conversations will be had. Now, in the hotel, there's Westfield's restaurant with the award-winning Sunday Champagne Brunch, a pub for those needed nightcaps, and, of course, Starbucks coffee. Well, there's a 40,000-square-foot conference center with award-winning catering, state-of-the-art audiovisual services, and wireless Internet. So that's a look at the location for this year's Bilderberg Conference. Let's talk now about what may, might be going on inside. Alex Jones is the host of The Alex Jones Show. And Alex, I know that you and your team are no stranger to this hotel, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, but let me first get your take on what you supposed might be discussed and decided behind closed doors there. Well, they had the, their meeting there four years ago, and that's where they chose to have Hillary step down and for Obama to become the presumptive nominee for the Democrats uh, there in Denver in the 2008 DNC meeting. And for an entire day, the media in Virginia and in D.C. was saying, where's Obama? Where's Obama? And we were there saying, he's inside. The Secret Service is there. Uh, we had inside sources that he indeed was there with Hillary. And years later, that came out. But the mainstream media would not cover it, uh, it at that time. And so I think some of the same things will be discussed. Should the elite get behind Mitt Romney or Barack Obama? Both men are bought and paid for by the same financial interest. And so the discussion will be which candidate can basically con the American people into uh, laying down to tyranny for another four years. They'll undoubtedly be discussing wars with Iran, uh, ways to censor the Internet. Uh, that's been discussed in past years. The head of Google and others were attending in uh, Switzerland last year when my team covered it. So they're going to be discussing a lot of things. Also, how to sell the public on more banker bailouts, that is, more taxpayer money uh, paid to the private uh, banks that have hijacked our country. And uh, they'll also be discussing how to ram through carbon taxes uh, because their environmental uh, hoax has imploded. But Alex, I mean, when you talk about uh, the decision being made about which candidate to support, I mean, we still, uh, you know, have a system in this country where people go to vote. When you talk about future policies being made, uh, we still do have a process. Legislation has to be written. Laws have to be voted on. Um, I guess I'm just wondering how this uh, Bilderberg conference is, you know, different than any other, uh, you know, meeting that important people have, lawmakers have when they have dinner or, or play golf together already. Sure. Some of the minutes of Bilderberg have been leaked over the years, and Bilderberg has confirmed that it's been theirs. Uh, we've covered them on Infowars.com. The BBC has covered it. And the, the Bilderberg group set up officially in 1954 in Oosterbeck, Holland, uh, with Prince Bernhard and uh, others uh, establishing it, has always been pushing for one world corporate fascist government. And up until about five, six years ago, the mainstream media in this country, the United States, but also in Europe, would not even say it existed. They would admit that the Trilateral Commission, Skull and Bones, Bohemian Grove did. But they would say Bilderberg didn't exist. And so we know 
from past research that the 125 elitists that meet there and their 20 or so guests really do discuss policy behind closed doors and make a lot of important decisions. They also have three or four Bilderberg steering committee meetings uh, over the next year. So this is one of the most important globalist meetings ever. Uh, David Rockefeller and his memoirs has written about that. Uh, royalty attends this, and uh, this is one of the most important confabs out there. And Hillary Clinton was fined back in the 90s hundreds of thousands of dollars for attending Bilderberg when she was in the Clinton White House and discussing policy uh, at the event violating the Logan Act. So wow. policy is being set there, and this is one of the most elite meetings out there. Uh, let's talk more about what you were just kind of touching on, which is that most of the mainstream media um, doesn't cover this. They observe sort of a blackout covering Bilderberg. Security is tightly controlled, and those who do get in, as you say, they've got to keep their lips sealed. Uh, but what if the media wanted to cover this, especially being that it's in Virginia this year? I know uh, you and your team had an experience trying to get some access in the past. What would people encounter if they asked for, say, a press pass to Bilderberg? Well, they won't even tell you that it exists when you go there. But then separately, because of pressure the last few years, they have created a website. They do put out a list of who's there. But generally, that's disinformation. Some of the people on the list aren't there. A lot of people that are there are not on the list. And in fact, some of the most important names. Uh, so I don't expect the mainline U.S. media to cover this this year because for so many decades, they told their readers and viewers it didn't exist and you were insane. So I think there is the big story that shows you how powerful it is. The media for 50 years has covered Bohemian Grove. A lot of big decisions get made there. Uh, the media for decades has covered Skull and Bones. They will not cover Bilderberg. Now, because of the alternative media and RT and the Drudge Report and others starting to cover it, because of that and because the alternative media has become so dominant now, the Washington Post two weeks ago came out and admitted that, uh, that Senator Arubio was going to the South American conference to be part of an unofficial Bilderberg steering meeting. Anybody who knows about Bilderberg knows that the first media ever allowed in in 54 was the head of the Graham family at Bilderberg in Europe. And so every year since then, uh, either the son or the mother or the CEO uh, of the Washington Post um, media empire attends, and they would never report on it. Now, two weeks ago, in a big column, they basically go, yeah. Rubio wants to be vetted by Bilderberg. He wants to up his international cred at Bilderberg coming up uh, in early June. So he's going to this conference. And Alex, for, for those of our viewers who don't know, just give us a little, um, a little nuts and bolts recap of what happened when you tried to uh, get into the hotel the last time around. Well, I checked in two days before they shut it down and kick you out. And I had security walk up after I checked in and said, Alex Jones, don't you dare try to steal anything. And I said, well, I don't steal. I don't, I don't have a criminal record. And then I go in my hotel room, and the, and the fire alarm goes off. And then they come out and accuse me of doing it and, and told me I was trying to steal vases. Oh, oh, in fact, they'd said, don't steal, don't try to steal vases during fire alarms. But now and you I, weren't able to, to be in the hotel when the conference was going on. Sure, sure. No, no. Then they kicked me out. Uh, and then they had cars following us, people breaking into our hotel rooms, threatening phone calls. Uh, all sorts of stuff, uh, military in plain clothes, uh, harassing us. I mean, it was bizarre. But Jim Tucker got shot at uh, in Portugal, what, back in, I think it was 1991. So, so this is wild. I mean, in the past, they really wanted to be secretive. Now that their cover is blown, uh, they admit that they basically exist, but say that they're just a, you know, meeting, uh, you know, discussing policy in a free and open way, and that's why they have the uh, secrecy. But... The New York Times, a few years after I infiltrated, attacked my film, The Obama Deception, and said that I was at the Westfields Marriott in Virginia having a hallucination. Oh, goodness. And, and that I was insane and that nothing even happened there. And All right. remember, the whole media is looking for Obama and Hillary. We're there. They're there. The Secret Service motorcade is there. And the national media would not come and cover it. That's how powerful Bilderberg is. And I'm calling in closing. 
I'm calling to occupy Bilderberg, to protest it, and I'm calling for tens of thousands to be there coming up in one month. All right. Well, you keep us posted on, on what you see, and we'll certainly keep our eyes there as well, since it is sort of, uh, relatively speaking, in our backyard this year. Alex Jones, host of The Alex Jones Show. Thanks so much. Thank you.